Hey everyone, this is Epic Book Review with Amber Teeman. Do you not like my music? Is that, I can't hear it. What? You can't hear the Epic Book Review music? Oh, it must be you. Well, maybe it's because, so we just, I just did my wonderful intro and then Amber said, my dog's barking. So that just happened. Scratching at the door, if I didn't get the letter <laughs> out, you know what would happen there. It's like, have you, ever seen that? The, have you ever seen the video of, remember the guy from like on the BBC and then his kid starts <laughs> waddling in. <laughs> yeah, so that was like going to be the dog version of this. So uh -huh. I like, hey, so I am very blessed to have my good friend, Amber team. And Amber and I have been friends forever. And sometimes we take little breaks because <laughs> Amber <laughs> hates me for a little bit. And then we'll keep be friends again. And then <laughs> a little bit, a right? little true, maybe a little true. Right. And that's how good of friends we are. Cause I can bug Amber enough and she'll hate me, but we'll always come back. I mean, <laughs> there's no lie there. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Amber, what's really cool is it is Saturday, August 26th and we're recording this. And I asked Amber, cause we're going to talk about her book lead with appreciation, fostering a culture of gratitude that she wrote in 2019 with Melinda Miller. And we're going to talk, I'm going to ask her three questions on this, but on August 19th, last week, I had a very special guest. I had your daughter who I did not know is a teacher and she was absolutely, and now as you got to live up to her, she was very, very good. Oh, good. I am, we are extremely proud. And this was not her original career path, which I'm sure she talked about, but she is doing great. Listen, I, education was not my original career path, right? And I've done okay. Is that uh, it's worked out? It's worked out. So this, just so you know, this is how actually I got I got to share this story because I thought it was really interesting. Um, the re how I asked um, Taylor to be on the podcast was I tweeted an article that I wrote, and then I saw you tagged Taylor in it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Why would you tag Taylor? And then I text you right away. I'm like, is she a teacher? And you're like, and then you're, and you're, you know, kind of sad because it shows our age right away. <laughs> right. That's fair. Fair, fair. <laughs> so then I, so I know I like asked your permission if I could have her on the podcast and then you're like, just hold on. Yeah. And then it. So, yeah. And I'm just, I, I, I'm like, I know I'm like a distant uncle, but I still feel like. <laughs> I, I think my family is well aware of you and, right. and impact of things. So yes, they, I'm sure surreal for her too. So before we get into the book, I do got to like, tell me a little bit, like, how proud are you? Like, how proud are you? She, it's amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. She has worked full time since she was 16 yeah. in full time, 32, 40 hours. She finished college in like two and a half years because she took so many hours and still worked full time. Um, so to see her now, given the same energy, effort and perseverance that she's always shown, but it's to the benefit of what I what I've spent my life doing or that she's getting to benefit and see when you care enough about something you want 10 hour days. It just is a different, it's a different experience. So I'm very proud. And that's, I remember that too. Like where didn't she work at, did she work at Chick-fil-A? Am I right? Right. Cause I remember that. Jeez, oh man, I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm going to do the, the gray filter, get it out of my <laughs> And just, I, I, I think you're actually the first, you know, mother daughter comment. <laughs> That I ever okay. it, that's a profession, which is kind of like it, just, it was just really neat. So it just, oh. you know, it it come on, like you got to feel a little proud and a little old at the same time. I, I literally was thinking, and here I am, still thirty five. How do I have a twenty one year old? All right, All right. So. okay. So I asked Amber to be on the podcast because we're going to talk about the book "Lead with Appreciation: Fostering a Culture of Gratitude." And I remember distinctly in twenty nineteen you and I, cause we've been friends for so long. I remember, and I said this before, I remember just your excitement about when the book was released. I was in an airport in Phoenix. I remember actually walking on the, on the walkway, the moving walkway and just, just really proud of you. Cause I've known you for so long. You've been blogging for a, a long time and you've done so many positions and it's just, it's really, really great. So I got, I got three questions um, that I'm going to ask you about this book. And so just before I even get into three questions, give us a quick synopsis of what is the book? What is, what's it about? All right, so Lead with Appreciation, again, uh, that I wrote with Melinda, kind of took off from a Facebook group that she and I created when we were both principals, 2015, 2016-ish, 
Um, we want it to be geared towards people who thought like us and who wanted to celebrate their staff, get to know them on a personal level and really appreciate at a intentional level. So we start this Facebook page. It has 26,000 administrators only. Oh. Um, and the only thing we talk about is staff appreciation. Like, how do you do it? When do you do it? Wh who pays for it? What are some ideas? What if I'm lazy? What if I don't think this is important? How do I get to know all these people? Um, and at some point, Shelly and Dave Burgess reached out and said that they thought that the concept of the group and the purpose of what we were trying to do would make a great book. And so Melinda and I partnered up having, I think, known each other for that many years. We've been in the same place three or four times and that's it. And yet we wrote the book together and have gotten to do some really fun things, but um, we very rarely actually see each other. Is that, is that actually, does that group still exist? Yeah. Okay. So, can I, so I'm going to share the link. Can pe people can still join it, right? Uh -huh. Ad administrators, principals or assistant principals. We try to make that way. So teachers don't get in and be like, we don't really like that. Or that's my principal. Now I know what's happening. So. Right. Kills us. So here, so you could probably, you can join, anyone can join the group, but I'm going to say, if you join the group, you got to buy the book first. That's, Ooh, that's I like it. Say that. <laughs> it is a quicker read than scrolling through the Facebook. So <laughs> like, you know, support, you know, cause it's like, it, it, it's, it, I feel like it would be a great companion, right? You'll get some of yeah. the, but you also get some of the new stuff. So like, yeah. you know, please support the authors here. Cause they do really great work. And I know Amber wouldn't have said that. So that's why I'm saying oh. it. Um, make sure you check out the book and that all obviously also um, is linked as well. And the, the, the thing that I, I, I really appreciate about you, and I know this about you because I know you're a principal. I know, I think you're a director of technology. Is that your title right now? Executive director of tech and innovation. Right. Is that you, is that you, as much as you take time to show appreciation, gratitude uh, for your staff, you don't, you also don't like kill them. <laughs> And then say, hey, I'm sorry about what we did to you. Here's a yoga class. The <laughs> Here's the donut. <laughs> but it's like you you find that balance of the work is just if we if teachers just had to teach, that would be hard enough. And I know you do everything to remove barriers to make sure teachers have as much time to be with the people in front of them. Mm -hmm. So but also combining the two. So I, that's I, I know that about Amber. And I've known that and that's honestly why we connected so long ago when you're assistant principal. And by the way, a little I'm going to do this. Uh, Amber Tiemann, when uh, years ago, she's like, I'll never be a principal. I'm like, and she's this principal. I'm like, yeah, you should be a principal. And then I was right. So shout out to George. <laughs> so for being right. <laughs> what other podcast do you get to go on where the guy gives himself a shout out? Oh no, it's it's a new it's free. <laughs> do it. You know, as we appreciate ourselves. All right. So <laughs> you love it. You love it. All right. Okay. So Thank first, you. first question about the book, Lead with Appreciation. So obviously 2019, why'd you write the, you know, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to do some of these podcasts on these books that were written prior to pandemic and say like, how are they relevant today? So why'd you write this book in the first place? We genuinely felt Melinda and I, and I know I can speak singularly in the same applause for her. Um, there are 5,000 things expected of administrators. Um, they are supposed to encourage and motivate, but hold accountable, but you know, discipline if needed and also teach well, and then make these humans great people. And there's so much pressure on teachers. Um, and principals are the bearer of that. And so it took, and I know that you remember this because I'm sure that we discussed it. It took a good seven months when I became principal before I recognized that when I walked in the room and people nodded their head and smiled and my jokes were funny and my outfits were cute, was it because of my sparkling personality? Uh, it actually was because I was the principal and your position precedes your person every single time. And my love language is gift giving. My love language is gift receiving also. Um, so and I would <laughs> you hear that, Michael Um, I would naturally go above and beyond in certain ways to show appreciation and give here's a cute new t shirt staff, or hey, I'm gonna give you a ding dong, and ding dong, the bell's rung, everybody's here, let's have some fun, like all the puns with all the snacks. Until I realized that they didn't necessarily all like, oh, thanks, the Amber, like, uh, what? Quit sucking up, quit trying to win us over, quit trying to bribe us, was literally their mentality until they got to know Amber, the person who has been this way her entire life. 
And so that was a huge turning point for me to recognize that not everybody understands the purpose or the intent when giving and receiving, and that there were other principals who think you get a paycheck. What do you want from me? <laughs> like you get compensation for the job you signed up to do. I'm not buying donuts. I'm not going out of my way to solicit fundraisers or donations to be able to fund a luncheon. Um, I don't have time for that because again, of the 5,000 things that they have to do, they just don't, they don't need it. So they don't necessarily know they should give it. So the purpose of the book was not to negate or diminish the importance of academic integrity, because again, my wolves were the brightest and smartest in all of the land. Um, we, we recognize that you have tons of meetings and you've got tons of people to make happy and you've got parents and you've got students. If we can make this one part of your job easier, if we can help you out with the ideas that maybe you're too tired or too stressed or just don't naturally think of, here's an entire book dedicated to getting to know your staff, why it matters, how you can do it. That was, we want to take that one little sliver of what we did, what we know that we both did and help other people with that sliver. Okay. So I got, I got two things I got to share with you. So this is, and this is uh, for everybody listening, it's stuff that I know about Amber is that you could look at this book and the title and think, oh, this is like all mush stuff and we don't need this in education. And Amber is very, I don't know Melinda I, and I will say this, but I know that I speak for both of you um, in the sense that Amber does these things to ensure that kids do well in school. And I feel sometimes I get frustrated where I'm like, what is, what is what you're talking about? Not you, but other, you know, people like, Hey, you should do this. You should do this. I'm like, what does this have to actually do with improving learning? Right. So th there is a, there is a through line that's very important for both you and I, uh, which is probably one of the reasons that we, we connected so well. And so when you're looking at this stuff, this is not, the book is not a focus on, Hey, like you should show gratitude just cause it is, hey, like, here's ways that this actually will benefit learning, which I know you are very passionate about, and so am I, and we get frustrated when people don't make that connection. The second thing, and I, I love what you said, because, you know, I, you and I have the same probably weakness area that we have certain ways that we do things, and it, it is kind of blind spots to us too. And I, when you're talking about this, I remember, so I hired an amazing assistant principal, uh, her name is Cheryl Johnson. She was my very first hire and always my, she was my best hire and she could not be more different than I am, which was the point of me hiring her. Right. I don't need a George clone. In fact, nobody wants two Georges. I know you would agree with that. Amen. <laughs> Stage and I say amen. <laughs> One George is pretty good. Come on. Right. 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 <laughs> so, so the thing that I remember her saying this because I don't ever ask for praise, but I want praise. But then when I got, I'm like, ah, I don't even mention it, even though I'm like, yes, by the way. <laughs> and, and I remember her saying to me, like, do not acknowledge me in front of anybody. Like, I will like kill you. Don't, don't do this. And it was so, and I, I was like, what, how could not some, how can someone not want the attention for this? And so she's very like, I want to just do good work. I don't, I, and it was kind of like when you're talking about the love languages, I kind of thought about how her and I were very different in that sense, which is again, which is one of the reasons I hired her. So I, I love that you made that distinction and I try to do this and I know you do it very well before we start kind of pointing out faults in others or things you can improve. It's like, Hey, I got to kind of look internally, like what am I doing wrong? And then actually how do I kind of correct it? And then what did I learn from that? That maybe can help others because mm -hmm. way easier to point fingers at yourself and at other people, but can people learn from your example? So Lo love that. All right. So second question. So it was written in, you know, probably it was published in 2019. So obviously you said you had been working on it prior to that. So you can, now it's 2023. If you can go back in time and maybe change something, add something, subtract something, what would that be in this book? I think the takeaway of it being about donuts or jeans passes to where it's just about giving gifts yeah. Um, because I think post the pandemic, now we see even more loudly teachers saying, it's not about the jeans pass. It's about how you treat me Monday through Thursday. And then I get to wear jeans on Friday. Like we, we hear and see a lot of that. Um, and so I think trying to figure out a way that I could have 
shown it either on the cover or or the way that we pushed out marketing to something that says that it is a it's research based. We 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 talk about all the research. Right. Um, it's full of ideas for men and for women for elementary for secondary. It, appreciating people is not. I've had a, a clinic here in town buy copies for their people because it's just about getting to know who works for you, how to balance the responsibilities and expectations of your role, and what we can do to meet the needs of all eighty of your potential women, which we all know is real hard. Um, and so I don't know that it, I think it came up with, here's five ideas for teacher appreciation week. And here's a way that you can decorate oranges and say orange is flat, it's Friday, which is real superficial, not, not important because I think appreciation is important, but I, I know there have been eye rolls of, I don't, I'm not buying stuff for my staff. They, I'm going to treat them like professionals. So I, I wish I could have saw that coming and headed it off at the pass. But that's why. There's a wonderful Facebook group that is down below because you can have those conversations, right? But you have to still buy a book to get in. That is the ticket. Research fun ideas, both. <laughs> One of the things I say a lot, and people really resonate with this, and as you really hammered it home, is there is a huge difference between the idea of being valued and feeling valued. You can say you value people all you want, but if they don't actually feel it, it doesn't really, really matter. And to for people to feel it, you have to understand who they are, what they need. So I, I love that. And I think that that and really, that a helps. really great. Again, you see, and I know that you've seen them because you're in most of the same groups as me, people that buy the calorie cart and there's candy and there's ding dongs and there's all the things. When we, when I did that at my school, I had a six pack of slim fast. I had some protein packs. I had a veggie packet with little ranch. Good for you. <laughs> but because my people were on diets and so if they or if they're gluten allergic to gluten or if like have a peanut allergy if all i have is candy and sugar i'm not actually meeting the needs of people i'm doing it so i can post a picture on facebook that says i took the calorie card around so again be intentional don't just said that what'd you say what you just said i appreciate that because listen this is that became very personal for me all of a sudden right because you know right. how Weight I've lost and how important that is to me. So I like, I'm going to be honest with you the next week and the week prior I've been speaking and it's like everyone getting together. <laughs> Feels meals, food. It's all junk food. It's just nonstop. And then they're like, well, why don't you eat? And I'm like, because if I did this all week, cause everyone has the junk food all week, then I would be back in the same situation I got in the first place. And there are no other options. So like a lot of times I feel bad because I'm like, Hey, I know you're all having lunch together, but I'm just going to step out and just go, you know? So I have to like pick, do I want to try to eat healthy or do I want to connect with people? And I would rather do both, but it, it's like, you don't have the option. And so I'm like, Hey, it'd be really nice to connect with people. But I also like want to make sure that I don't feel crappy the next day, which mm -hmm. food can do to you. And so I really, I really appreciate that you said that. And like, I'm kind of shocked because nobody, I've really never heard anyone talk about that, you know, bringing some of those other options. And I love that. That, that really meant a lot to me. I know it was wow. for me, but you know, I've been on a hell of a journey with I, it. I've been, been alongside of you. Yeah. And so that, you know, it, it's, it's just a nice thing to say. And like, I hear uh, this venting self-care and it's like always resting. I'm like, no, actually for me, self-care is working out, eating healthy. And, and I don't even talk about rest. I talk about recovery because recovery was after I worked hard, but like, <laughs> right. but resting just kind of like, Oh, like I'm, you know, I'm just resting. I'm like from like, from what? Right. Like there's <laughs> so recovery is different because it connects to me pushing myself. And that is self-care for me. So I, I love that was, listen, I'm giving out air horns to everybody here. <laughs> everybody. Right, that was a great answer. I love that answer. Okay. Last question. So you wrote this prior to pandemic 2023. Like, why is it still relevant? Why is it still relevant today? Like why, why, you know, cause people will, will say, oh, this is before the pandemic. And it's like, all of a sudden everything doesn't matter. That was written prior. Right. Uh -huh. Hey, we've all, we, there's, there's obviously things that we can learn. There's things we can get better at, but there's, uh, you know, obviously the, the theme of this book I hear about all the time in, in and it's like, how do we like show more gratitude? I'm like, hey, have you, you know, there's a book on it. So there's another Facebook group that I didn't know about too. 
So why is this relevant in 2023? I think it's even more relevant now. And this is like a cheesy cliche, but hear me out. How many teachers are brand new? Yeah. How many principals have left the profession? Teachers in your house are brand new. Literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> right. Um, I think that you've got a whole new generation of, of people who aren't satisfied with a paycheck who are looking at the, that the pandemic taught them. I don't have to work here. I can. And here's what they do to make it a better environment. And that's why I choose to be here um, for a new principal, for a new leader in any role. Because again, as the technology person, I still do stuff from the book because it's just fun stuff and involves snacks um, for a new person. You've got everything in the world to figure out, learn and, and know how to do let us give you a book of resources so that you can do intentional gratefulness. You can do intentional acts, but it doesn't necessarily distract you from desegregating data, meeting with PLCs, learning your families and your students. Um, but just take that off your plate, cross that off the list, hand this book to your secretary and say, pick something for September and the work is done. And I think that we are in a place where the easier we can make life for people, the easier it is for us to all feel like we're getting through it. And so so you, I think you and I have a connection here too, because I've been really been pushing people. And it's funny because this book was written in 2019 and it's 2023. And I, I've been saying this over and over again this summer. Are we so desperately trying to get back to 2019, which kind of sucked. <laughs> Isn't that great then too, right? Like we were saying like things need to change in education or yeah. we create something new and better in 2023, 2024 school year. Right. And learning from this. And the weird thing is, and I think this is why I brought this up. It's actually getting back to why we actually got into education in the first place. Like actually kind of weirdly saying that like 2019, we were kind of hardened. the system, you know, takes sucks the life out of people. We, you know, we, we don't necessarily keep up with what we intended, but when you create these cultures that are focused on gratitude, people feeling appreciated and how important that is, it is actually aligns with the aspirations that we had when we first got into education. And I think that, that to me is like part of the conversation that we've been having today is, are we creating a system where we have to go out of our way to make people feel appreciated because we do everything to make them feel crappy or do we actually not make them feel crappy and then kind of like just, and then plus the appreciation, which is a totally different thing. And so I, I love this and I love talking to you. Right. Yay. We, you know what? We talked for like 30 minutes. We even fight once today. I don't even know what's going on. You know why? Yes. Maybe I'll see you in a couple of years. So <laughs> Hush. Hush. I love it. All right. So, Hey, the, you'll see the, the link to the book down below in the description. Uh, and if you, Hey, and I'm going to give a people a challenge. If you made it this far in the podcast, which, uh, and you know, some people, <laughs> which you missed out, you missed, you missed out. Seriously. So that's one way that you, you know, write in the comments down below. What's one way you show appreciation, uh, for people. And here's what I'll do. If you do it on YouTube, I will, I'm going to pick one person. I'm going to send them a book. So I'll send a, a, you a copy of lead with appreciation. Oh, okay. I was going to send you my book or your books. <laughs> I'm going to send you, I'm going to send, I'm going to buy them. Uh, so just comment and then I'll, I'll pick someone here too. Um, but you also see the Facebook group and you can join that too. And, and that's wonderful. So Amber, thanks for taking the time. I know you got a million things to do today. I know you ignored my emails, didn't want to talk to me today, but I forced you because I needed a podcast this week. Whatever. Whatever. So, hey, everyone, thanks for being part of another epic book review. Did you hear that? You're a mess. You're a mess. <laughs> Please leave the dancing in. I want the dancing in. All right. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care.